International Women's Day, and we're not ignoring it here on the platform, um, and, and there's been that underlying theme to our day. And I, I wanted to talk today to an organisation that is imperfect as a man and, and how, as much as I don't have a right to comment on this, um, that we've featured often on the platform who I think do a great job in advocating for women's rights on issues that are difficult and need explaining, and that organisation is Speak Up For Women. One of their spokespeople is Suzanne Levy. She's been on the programme before, but I wanted to talk to her here on International Women's Day, and here she is. Suzanne, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Oh, thanks, Sean. How are you this morning? Good, thank you. All right, International Women's Day 2023, and International Days, they're a thing, OK, and, and everything. But I, I wanted to ask you, if you think in the last year, women in New Zealand... Um, in terms of the philosophical arguments and currents in our society and the ideologies, a woman better off on this International Women's Day in New Zealand than they were a year ago? I don't know if, if a year is enough to make a difference, but I think over the last few years, I think potentially worse off, especially younger women, wow. and the, the visibility of women as a group, as a sex class, um, about what it means to be a woman, about being proud to be a woman. Um, I think some of those things we're, you know, we're losing a wee bit, um, which is which is really sad. And I, and I was thinking about this this morning and about my own experiences of things like International Women's Day and growing up. And I remember I grew up with the girls can do anything thing. Um, yeah, you know, I was. I'm kind of a, a product of that, I suppose. It was a 1980s thing. Um, one thing we were never told was that we could be, we could be boys. We could do anything, but we we couldn't be boys, and was never never brought up or suggested. Uh, and I think I don't know. I can came, remember in my teams there was a whole ca government campaigns. Girls can do anything. Exactly, and that's the campaign I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think International Women's Day, it, it, it's, it's fantastic. And I'm going to spend it sort of just, you know, with women. And I've got a, an event yeah. tonight, um, you know, and thinking about the women I know and how empowering they are and, 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 you know, all of those things. But at the same time, because of the area I'm working in, I'm very aware of the fact that the um, while we're celebrating being women, we're also having to fight mm. Look, we had Yvonne Van Dongen on earlier and, and she raised this yeah. amazingly good point and I'd be so interested to get your take on it. She's written a piece um, for Dane Giroux and Face Off, uh, called Face Off and we're going to publish it on the platform where she says, and Yvonne is a feminist, she says, if blackface is so um, offensive to people of colour, why aren't drag queens equally offensive or unacceptable to women? Well, they are to a lot of women. They mm -hmm. are a lot of women see it exactly the same way. It's a woman's face, um, and I, I read the Yvonne's article yesterday. What uh, do you think of it? And I, 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 I like it. I agree with it. I think, um, having said that, I've you know I've been to I've been to drag shows. Yeah. And I've always said there's a time and a place for them, but yeah. at, the, at the same time, when you're living in a time where women are, are being erased in some ways, yeah. to see that sort of demonstration of basically femininity being laughed at parody parody mm. um you know they're, they're kind of a caricature of all of the the sort of things about women that that aren't empowering i suppose but the, so i i like to i liked her article i thought it was a, a good a good take on it i thought it was thought provoking she's also preparing yeah. a piece we're going to publish on a guy who's serving nine and a half years in a woman's prison a really mm, violent Matt, Matt, Yeah, Matthew Nelson. Yeah, we're we're aware of um we're aware of him as well. He yeah, he stabbed three people, including his ex ex girlfriend. Um, yeah, nine and a, nine and a half years is uh, a fairly steep sentence for anybody. And into, suddenly you know, he Matthew. grows his hair long and he's a Sheila. Well, to be fair, I think he'd he'd been trying to transition for some time. Um, I don't think it's as simple as saying he you know, decided, oh, well, yeah. if I can, you know, say I'm, a, say I'm a woman, I can go into a woman's prison. Um, but 
yeah, it's, it's appalling. And the women who are potentially incarcerated with him, I mean, what a nightmare. Yeah. Suzanne, yeah. it seemed to me on this International Women's Day, the problem we've got is that anyone can be a woman in our well, current culture. Well, I was going to ask you, you were asking you were asking on Twitter the other day whether you should And you know um, what? And I I'm not because forty five percent said yes you should. Um I think about fifteen percent said no and the rest said don't be so bloody silly. <laughs> I did think of another challenge for you though. I thought that on International Women's Day yep. you could not interrupt a single female Oh no, guest. that's just me. I, I interrupt anyone. It's not gender specific, <laughs> um, Suzanne. <laughs> it's but that's like saying woman always nag, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Look, yeah. I think it is good. I think it's great that we do discuss this. And I, and I was, I, you know, I do think about days like that and these issues. And I think in my lifetime, the position of woman has changed and improved. Though I, have, I cannot say that from the perspective of a woman because that's not my lived experience. But I do see, particularly in terms of transgenderism and what I would call... I don't know, liberal sexuality, it is women who stand to lose most from that and from certain changes in societal norms and men don't stand to lose so much. So I'm going to ask you, what could happen in... What would, ha what would be the one thing or attitude or law in New Zealand that could change between now or you'd want to change between now and this time next year that would actually improve the lot of women in New Zealand, Suzanne? I think to have it reaffirmed that women as a sex class are protected would be really important. It's been sort of floating around in our um, government and legal stuff for, a, for a, a few years now as to whether gender trumps sex. I think it would be very, very good to have that clarified. Um, and I think just to, to fight for women to look at the fact that the domestic violence rates and sexual violence rates have not have not improved um you couldn't you couldn't say to young women now that you know you're growing up in a time where you're safer and i would like to be able to say that i would like to um you know be able to turn around in a year and say we live in a safer society it is now safer to be a woman than it was a year ago now that's unlikely to change in a year but I would mm. really like it if we were moving in the right direction. And one of the things that can help that is to identify women as yeah. women. Uh, look, I'll throw up another thing because I think in the context of all this uh, and on a personal level, <laughs> and you want to identify people by gender, what would you have identified the late Georgina Byer as? Oh, Georgina, um, the thing is, I, you know, I was aware of Georgina a long time ago and Georgina was of a time when <laughs> Georgina would never have. She, she, I, I will call her a she. I always referred to her as a she. Yep, she never. She, she knew that she was a, a man. She never. She never said that she was a woman. And I think that is the big difference between then, whenever then is, and now, is th the fact that you know for a long time there were people like Georgina who lived the way they lived and were accepted um, hopefully by lots of people and never expected that they were uh, completely accepted as a, as a woman they knew that they weren't um, and that seemed to work for an awfully long time and then it changed and it changed to it being unacceptable to, to question that to have to use the correct pronouns to have to accept that um, men could be women, that trans women are women, and it and it's kind of come in that way, and it hasn't probably been great for people like Georgina in some ways. Yeah. Um, who? So I, I wouldn't. I would never have said that Georgina was a woman. I would say she was a, a trans woman, but but I would have happily called her she. And I did, and, and I got to say that's why I confronted it because uh, I, I'd done that very poll you were talking about, and my next tweet was so sad to hear about Georgina Bar, and it gave me pause for thought. Uh, Suzanne, I thank you very much for joining us today on International Women's Day. I hope you have a great day, and I thank you for uh, all the contribution you make uh, and to the debates that we have on the platform. Lovely to and to speak okay, up for women in general. Cheers. Thank you very much. Bye bye, Suzanne Levy. Um, from Speak Up for Women.
And these are interesting things to, to reflect on. They, they really, really are.